Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're gonna learn how to create those spiral meshes in Houdini for real-time VFX. So as you can see here, I've got plenty of those uh, spiral meshes that I'm actually spawning with some random rotation in Unreal Engine and I'm panning the texture across this mesh. I also got this uh, main trail. So this one's quite large and it actually has the same rotation every single time because it's a main spiral trail. Right, so let's dive into Houdini and let's start creating uh, those meshes. So I'm gonna start by adding the geometry node. I'm gonna call this one Spiral Tutorial. Dive inside and I'm just gonna bring a spiral node. It's actually from the labs, uh, side effects labs. If you don't have this in your tool set, what you can do, you can just press the plus button, go under shelves. And in here, you should be able to see side effects labs tab. Once you enable it, you should be able to see this icon. So basically click and install your uh, tools for the side effects labs. And then you'll probably have to uh, reopen Houdini. Right, so I've got this node here. I'm gonna press space and F to frame it. I'm gonna change a couple settings here. 0.2, height maybe 0.5, and loops 1.5. I'm gonna frame it again. And as you can see, we've got this basic spiral. So experiment with, experiment with those settings so you can get something that you actually want and need for your project. I'm just gonna stick to those. Next, I'm gonna bring resample node. In here, I'm gonna change this to be subdivision curves and I'm gonna enable maximum segments and I'm gonna put 12 here because I need this to be slightly lower resolution. Right, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna click here. Then on this arrow, you can see, you can select points now. So I'm gonna select that point, press T on my keyboard and just move it somewhere around here. Once I finished, I'm just gonna reset the Y value to be zero. Okay, I'm gonna select another point and I'm gonna do the same thing just to create slight curve here. And I'm gonna reset the height position of that point as well. I'm gonna do this couple times here and zero deposition. I'll actually bring this a little bit closer. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna use a resample again, just to fix my point distribution. So same thing, subdivision curves, but the maximum segment, I'm actually gonna go for the higher number of 100. As you can see, it's gonna create this nice smooth spiral for us. I want the spiral to start here mainly because I just want this to start away from the character and then wrap around the character for that healing spell. Okay. And once we have this, the next thing is the sweep note. And I'm gonna change a couple settings here. I'm gonna change the surface type to be ribbon. For the columns, I'm gonna go for six mainly because I want to later on add some vertex color to the sides and to the both ends of that mesh. And I'm gonna apply the scale along the curve. I'm gonna create a point in the middle, 0.5 and the value of one. And those at the ends, I'm just gonna bring it to the lower value of maybe 0.1. Okay, then so I'm gonna actually pan the texture across this mesh. I think it's gonna look uh, a little bit nicer. We got slight pinching here. So what we could do, we could go to back to our edit uh, node, just select it once, do the same thing. So select this uh, points, maybe select that point, press T and just try to maybe move it a little bit. like this. I'm gonna zero the height position of it. 
and it's slightly better. Hopefully that pinching won't be visible in the engine later on. Okay, so we'll go, let's go back to the sweep node. And in here depends what kind of project you're working on. If you're working on the top-down game or maybe the third person view, you might have different settings for the roll. I'm just gonna apply maybe 45 degree roll for this mesh so it will be visible from most of the angles. Even from the first person view, I think it looks okay. Right, so you might need a, a custom solution for this. However, I think with 45 degree on the roll, I think it might look okay from most of the angles. Right, I'm gonna go here to the UV and attributes. I'm gonna compute UVs just so we can have some basic UVs. And I'm gonna create UV transform next. Uh, in here, you can actually go to set view and change it to UV viewport so you can preview your UVs and as you can see those are actually um, kind of going upwards and I want them to fit into 0 to 1 space into this square. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna type uh, into the scale x and y, it will be 1 slash dollar sign size x, press enter, copy this, go here and change x to y, press enter, as you can see it's actually gonna make our UVs to fit into the 0 to 1 space. So I'm gonna exit the UV view now, set view and go back to perspective. And once we have this, I'm gonna try a different techniques to add gradients. So normally you can probably add gradients with uh, this lab color gradient tool. However, one of my YouTube subscribers uh, posted this into the comments and I think it's really really cool idea so I decided to implement it so I can basically learn this technique and share with you as well so maybe you want to use this okay it's just gonna create a better distribution of the vertex colors and I want those vertex colors to be on both sides and both ends as well okay so first we need attribute promote in here, I'm just gonna type UV. Original class will be vertex and the new class will be points. Once we have this, we need point wrangler. I'm gonna enable it and I'm just gonna start typing this expression here. Okay, once you finish, you can just press uh, Hold, Control, and then press Enter. It's just gonna calculate this expression and you have to click on this button here now. And it's gonna give you those two RAMs. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring that one to the zero. Add another point, maybe 2.5 and value of one. And I'm gonna do something similar to the second gradient. However, I'm just gonna position it at 0.35, a value of one, and then another point at 0.65 and value of one. So we get we can get a little bit better distribution for our gradients. And now we have the vertex color applied to this mesh that we can use basically as an alpha rather than using a dedicated texture for this mesh. So thank you so much for that tip. It really helped me to create a, a better color ramps for my meshes. Okay, the next thing is I'm just gonna use transform. Uh, transform with a scale of 50. 
uh, I think side effects recommends a uh, scale of 100 when you're exporting to the game engines. I like to use somewhere in between. So I usually go for the scale of 50. And you can export this into the engine. However, I had a couple issues when I tried to import this into Unreal Engine. So before I actually export it, I've added normals, 180 here. And I also add divide node here just to triangulate that mesh before exporting it to the game engine. And it seems like this did a trick. So yeah, that's the setup for the uh, this custom spiral. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you learn um, some new technique, especially with this uh, color gradients for your vertex colors. Okay, now you can just go back and tweak settings and you have this procedural setup uh, for your spiral meshes. If this is a little bit too um, high res for you, you can just grab one of the resample nodes and reduce it to maybe 50. And you can play with this roll setting uh, for your faces on that mesh, okay? All right, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks.